The new M1 chips are astonishing, and this has meant that the new MacBooks that have just come out are some of the best laptops that students can get their hands on now. Hi guys, Archer here, a first year medical student, and in this video we're going to be comparing the two new M1 MacBooks, the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. To wrap it up, I have to say that the MacBook Air is the definite winner in this case for the large majority of people, and the Pro is more so for people who really need that extra bit of little power. So most people don't actually have to worry or consider the Pro at all. However, for a select view, the MacBook Pro is going to be the better option for those who value a longer battery life, those who are running intensive applications for a long period of time, or those who just have some extra cash to burn. In this video, I'm going to be dissecting how I came to the conclusion about which laptop is best for what student. And one of the most important things that we're going to consider is the value of each laptop. We're going to take a quick overview of the laptops, then we're going to compare their battery life, the fans, the microphone and speakers, and then we'll take a closer look at the pricing and configurations. All right, let's get straight into it. Overall, the base model of these two laptops looks exactly the same as the additions that were released earlier this year. The really interesting thing is you can actually see that these two laptops look really similar anyway. The only difference that there really is is just the width if you put them side by side. The Air has more of a wedge design compared to the MacBook Pro, which is more of just a slap. They both have the new M1 CPU, which is the best MacBook CPU that's ever been made. The only difference between the two CPUs is that the Pro has an eight core GPU and the Air just has seven cores. Now that just leads to a very minor difference that you're not really gonna notice unless you're using the right applications. So for most students, that's not gonna really apply. If you're just making assignments or making PowerPoints, that's not gonna be something that you're gonna really see. But if you're doing things like photo editing and making videos and running simulations, then you might see that difference on the Pro. But even still, it's gonna be pretty minor. You have to be using programs which are actually gonna use that extra core. One of the things that I do need to mention about the new M1 chip is that there's probably a few applications that aren't quite supported yet with this new chip, and there are a few as well that are not optimized. But to be fair, this really isn't much of an issue for casual users and for people who just use all the popular apps out there. So for myself, I only really use things like Notion, Zoom, Google Chrome, maybe a bit in video editing and photo editing and those are really popular so I'm gonna be fine but for the some of the stuff that I do with coding that's gonna be a little bit of an issue for a few months or so those things currently aren't supported but I see them being supported pretty soon however if you do rely on any of these sort of things you probably know about this yourself already and you might stay away from these new M1 laptops but basically like I said for the majority of people this is not going to be an issue either way you're getting a very portable device here and that's one of the great things about these 13 inch MacBooks so these devices are really portable and in fact these two laptops are really light. The MacBook Air is actually lighter than the iPad Pro in some cases depending on what sort of cases you have and such. So this just really helps out with that portability factor and this is really good because your backpack that you carry around is going to be a lot lighter as well. So the Pro actually weighs 1.4 kilograms and the Air just weighs a little bit less. They just look fantastic anyway and just very slightly the Pro is 100 nits brighter than the MacBook Air. So the MacBook Air is 400 nits and the MacBook Pro is 500 nits. This is more than fine, but the only thing that you might notice is in the air, it might be a little bit harder to see it when it, you're under the sun. But to be fair, I actually just use my laptop most of the time inside anyway, because any sort of screen is gonna be pretty hard to see in the sun. They have the same display and resolution, but the other difference is that the Pro does have a wider array of colors that it can show, about 25% more, but that doesn't really matter if you're just a normal student. It might matter if you're really into photo editing and video, but it's only something you'll really see if you put them side by side. Because of those M1 chips, the battery life in these two has been significantly increased and that's for the better. That just increases the reliability and portability factor of these two laptops. The other difference is, is that the MacBook Pro does have that infamous touch bar that I don't actually really use. That's really because I usually just have my laptop plugged into my screens, but I do find it useful sometimes when I'm doing video editing. It's just an extra fun thing that you can use if you do have it, but I wouldn't use it to sway my decision because I also find that I'm a little bit less efficient and less productive actually using the touch bar because there's more things to press and animations to wait for. And the really nice thing about these two new laptops is because of that chip yet again when you open it up the display will open up and load straight away whereas on previous laptops it did take a little bit longer with those Intel chips all right let's take a look at the defining factors which are going to determine which is the best laptop for you and what type of student you are 
All right, so the battery life of these two is significantly better than the previous generation. With these two laptops that I've been testing, I've actually found that I don't need that charger at all. I can actually reliably get through a day without having to charge it like I might do with my phone. Now that's a massive thing for me because when I go to uni, I'm always trying to look for a charger to plug in. So previously for the MacBook Air, it was said that it could get about 11 hours in the previous generation, and now it can get up to 18 hours. And for the MacBook Pro, it's been a jump from 10 to 20. And that's pretty insane. So we just have to see how close the laptops actually do get to those advertised numbers. But nonetheless, it's gonna be pretty good. Feel free to check my individual reviews of these two laptops to hear more about this. All right, so fans, this is the important one. This is the major difference between the Air and the Pro. In the Air, there's literally no fan inside of it, so it makes no noise at all. What this means is that the M1 chip has actually meant that these computers can actually run a lot cooler and that it doesn't actually need a fan. Now, actually, they claim that this new chip is actually 3.5 times faster than the last CPU and the graphics card is also five times faster. If you hate the sound of the fans on the MacBook like I currently experience with my 16 inch MacBook Pro here, then this might be an important consideration for you. However, because there is no fan, you want to make sure that there is enough airflow to the laptop underneath so that you don't try and push it too far. While it won't necessarily overheat, you do need to make sure that you're keeping that airflow because you wanna stop it from thermal throttling. And that will basically mean that the computer will just go a little bit slower if it gets a bit too hot. Now on the other side, the Pro does have that one fan. So that means if you are using intensive applications for a long period of time, the fan will kick in. And that means it will be able to keep the temperature lower for you. So you're able to actually keep that sustained performance up at a higher level for longer. This is the actual biggest difference between the two laptops. And basically the fact is if you are going to do things for a longer period of time and something that's quite intensive on the computer, you probably want to go for the Pro. But you just have to consider if this is what you really want to pay a little bit more for. So apparently there is a supposed difference between the speakers and the microphone between the Air and the Pro. But I think it's going to be pretty similar between the two anyway. The microphone on the Pro is supposed to have a studio microphone whereas the speakers are supposed to be a little bit fuller. All right, so we're taking a look at the camera and microphone of the MacBook Pro in comparison to the MacBook Air here. And I think there is a little bit of a difference in the microphone, but I wouldn't say it's anything substantial. And I wouldn't necessarily say it's studio-like, but it is at least a little bit better than the Air. So now let's take a look at the Air and let's see if you can see a difference. So this is actually on the MacBook Air. And so there might be that little bit of difference in microphone, but the cameras look exactly the same. One of the hard things to show you guys is there is actually a slight difference between the speakers but again it's nothing that's too substantial that would sway my decision in what laptop I would actually end up choosing. Okay so I just had a quick playback to listen to the recordings of the Air and the Pro and I could notice that the Pro microphone was a little bit more full than it was on the Air and this was something I also noticed with the speakers. So it really does come down to personal preference if you do prefer a fuller sound or something that's a little bit more sharp on the Air. However for the upgrade between the Air and the Pro I would not say that this upgrade in microphone and speaker quality is enough to just it. Okay, so this time you don't actually have to worry too much about what sort of CPU you need to get. Okay, so what we can see is that the MacBook Air is going to cost you at least $1,600 if you don't use your education discount. So I'd really recommend using that education discount if you can, because that will just save you a hundred bucks or so. Now, what you can actually see is that the MacBook Air comes in two editions. You can either get the eight core CPU with the seven core GPU, or you can get the same thing, but with an eight core GPU instead. But really, to be honest, if you're gonna pay some money to get that eight core GPU, then you might as well just get the Pro. But what you can see here for the upgraded MacBook Air, that's just 50 bucks off getting the entry model MacBook Pro. And in that way, you'll get some more power if that's what you're looking for. So one of the nice things here is it's much easier to choose the laptop for you because there's less configuration options. You don't have to choose which is gonna be the best CPU because they just have the same ones. So it's a much simpler choice here. Now, I think personally that 256 gigabytes is enough for what I do. If I need any more space, I'll just use a hard drive and I'm happy doing that. But if you are someone who might enjoy some extra space on their computer, then you might wanna think about upgrading because you have to think about here, is that gonna be worth $300 for you to upgrade your storage? Now, if you do think of yourself more as a power user in using the video editing and photo editing, then you might wanna consider upgrading your RAM for the MacBook Pro. The entry model does come with eight gigabytes, but if you're gonna be doing lots of this stuff for a long amount of time, and you're gonna be dealing with big projects as well, you're gonna probably want some more RAM. So in that case, you wanna pay for that upgrade with the 16 gigabytes of RAM. But just to make sure, literally for almost everyone, eight gigabytes is gonna be enough. So what do I think? 
hands down, the MacBook Air is gonna be a much better value device for the large majority of students. It's absolutely jam packed for its size and it comes with so much value. It makes it really hard for me to recommend the MacBook Pro unless you're a part of that very specific select few. It might be a little bit better for the Pro if you do want that little bit of increase in power, but it's not a valuable increase in how much it actually costs. In the previous generations, it was a lot harder to recommend which is gonna be the better laptop because of all the configuration options. But if I were to pick one now, I have to say that I'm going for the MacBook Air due to its performance, value, and portability. All right, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.